Hello and welcome to all of you to adimate.tv. What a pleasure to have this uh, esteemed audience with me today to discuss everything and anything about the economy in the post-COVID environment. Sure. Mr. Siddharth Rathor, would you like to have your points of view? Uh, you've fallen in love with the subject of the economics. Do you still uh, love economics given its severe challenges at this time? Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me first. Uh, but yes, there are challenges as uh, in this part of the uh, section, we have we were to discuss the challenges that are there uh, due to the pandemic. Now, uh, the three major challenges that I feel are one related to finance, the other related to uh, federal finances, uh, the second is regarding manufacturing, and the third is regarding the socio-economic development. Now, now uh, Professor Arun Kumar uh, is a stalwart on this uh, particular topic as well. So what has happened due to the pandemic is that the, the federal financial system that we have has started to move towards a lot more centralized system. Uh, this move is not sudden. This move has been for the last three, four years through the systemic reforms that we have had and uh, the GST reform that, that we had had. So what we have done is we have done, we have given the center a lot of financial powers and that has robbed the, the, fiscal, the fiscal powers of the states. So what this pandemic has thrown out is that now the states are becoming more dependent on the center for its finances. And if you see the yield curves of states borrowing, uh, recently Kerala borrowed at around 9% uh, from, uh, from the bonds. And uh, even after the relaxation of the FRBM for states, uh, the quantum of borrowing that the state governments can, uh, can do is, is quite minimal. And because of the GST, because GST brings about a lot of centralization, uh, that has strained the state finances. However, in the, in the part of opportunities, I'll talk about how there are wonderful opportunities available with states, which they can probably use uh, later on. Now, the second issue that I wanted to discuss is regarding manufacturing. And if we see that from 1989 onwards, in 1989, the share of manufacturing in the Indian economy was somewhere around 16%. And today we stand in 2020, this, is, this share is again around 17%. So which shows that there's complete stagnancy in the manufacturing uh, sector in the, in the country. And uh, to that effect, what we need to do, the crisis relates to both the hard infrastructure, the soft infrastructure, as well as the systemic, uh, the, the, uh, systemic reforms that we need to make uh, towards the labor market as well as the credit market. We'll talk about more about the labor reforms that the government has done. And the third major issue is that of the socio-economic development. In the socio-economic development, again, we have a kind of a legacy of not spending on education and health. So health contributes some, uh, health constitutes somewhere around 3.5% of GDP. That, that's how much, we exp how much we spend on health sector. And uh, for the education sector, it's somewhere around three percent. So what we are witnessing today, the kind of the kind of uh, the kind of crisis that we have, is because of the lack of investment that we have done in the, in the last seventy years. So in fact, the states which are doing uh, well, for example, the, the state of Kerala, which has responded excellently to this uh, pandemic, is because of its experience and because of its investment that has done in its health sector, and it's of, of course because of its experience with the Nipah virus as well. Now. Uh, again, there's one point of clarification uh, and uh, an addition that I wanted to make to both uh, Mithali's point as well as Professor uh, Arun's point. Uh, today, the data from CMI came out and uh, there's an editorial on, on business standard as well. So the employment figures are back to the pre-COVID level. Uh, the unemployment rate right now is around 8.5% as well as the labor force participation rate, which was mentioned in this uh, talk is now climbing to somewhere around 36 to 37%. The, the, usually for India, the labor rate participation rate is somewhere around 40%. So we are just a touch below it. But uh, this is a piece of good news that has come up today that uh, the employment, at least in the employment sector, uh, the unemployment is going down. In Siddharth Rathor, uh, your, uh, your solutions and opportunities. Sure, sir. So uh, I want to bring out a some some statistics uh, and share some statistics with you. Uh, the first is regarding the uh, there's a paper published by uh, Lucas Shanshal, and which said that India's top one percent of people have come have command of over uh, top the richest uh, one percent has command over twenty one percent of India's overall income. Uh, 
so you see the kind of inequality that that is prevailing in india is actually the same which was prevailing in 1921 so in 1921 as well the top uh, 1% was was commanding 21% of resources which essentially shows the kind of uh, tax system that we have presently in india now the problem that the the problems when i was discussing the problems i mentioned the federal finances now here lies a solution whereby the country needs to make innovative changes in its tax system especially at the state level as well as the local level now the problem with the overall tax system is that the states are overly reliant over the center and the state governments are not willing to share their power with the local governments whereas we say that we want to emulate china uh, as the outcome of it if you see down to the basics the growth pattern of china was based on the liberalization that happened at the domestic level at, at at the regional level immense power was given to local bodies now one of one of so innovative solutions could be something like a wealth wealth tax something like a congestion car tax something like sin taxes so delhi government had recently introduced 70% tax on alcohol now it has withdrawn that why why did you do that so this these are the kind of reforms that we need to do so that there is decentralization of finances now coming to the second point uh regarding the manufacturing that i was discussing now here and there are number of issues that the government has picked up one is of labor reforms now there is a quite a this quite a bit of uh, academic literature on the impact of labor reforms on manufacturing in india however what the three states have done states of up uh, gujarat and mp what they have done is they have taken they have taken and whitewashed their entire labor laws and they so to say thrown out the baby along with the bath water now what we need to do is balance the needs of both the labor as well as those of the manufacturers so manufacturers majorly the msmes have a issue of compliance with the taxation system so what we need to have is a dashboard system whereby the compliance is easy and if the governments want to reduce the the protection to the uh, workers then they need to substitute it with a universal benefit as as a backup option the second issue is relating to land uh, land acquisition now this is an issue that i personally work on uh, i'm working on blockchain smart contracts on 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 land on uh, land transfers so again land has huge potential in india however the way the fragmentation of land market that has happened that that is there we are not able to identify we are not able to generate potential from it then the issue of physical infrastructure there is a lot of hue and cry regarding infrastructure however the one of the major sources of infrastructure that we need to invest is in, is shipping 90% of world's trade happens in shipping and if you see throughout the history in the last 2000 years india was one of the major centers of, of, of world trade kochi was was known as one of the major centers however now we do not even have a single major uh, transit hub colombo is a major transit hub that is coming up so we need to invest heavily in private sector based uh, uh, shipping uh, shipping centers as they are much they are doing much uh, better than the government's uh, shipping centers then regarding social infrastructure yeah. we were talking about health and education uh, i mean talking about statistics here again the skill development level or the the number of the percentage of people who are skilled in india is just 2% 2% of india's workforce of 480 million is skilled and if you compare that to a country like japan which has 80% of its workforce as skilled or south korea which has 96% of its workforce as skilled we are way lagging behind however the issue that uh, that was raised in this particular talk was regarding education as well now what we what we need to focus is on primary education as well as primary health care or we we do not need more iims we do not need more iits in fact if you see the, the disaggregated level of expenditure it's 9 to 1 we spend 9 rupees on higher education and only 1 rupee on on, on primary and and uh, the skill based education of our subject of revival and as we all often say on edubate.tv uh, the only way to address the big c covid is by the three c's of being corrective collective and creative thank you for joining us have a good night